Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Video Recall Studio and today I'm going to share with you to recreate that button title from our button title pack. So let's check it out. Alright, so in DaVinci Resolve and now on the edit page, I'm going to bring a fusion composition down in my timeline and now we're going to be able to move over to fusion. I'm going to move my media out over there and then I'm going to bring a background here in the node area. I'm going to reduce the alpha channel down to zero and then bringing here a text node, linking the output of the text node to the background output so we can just have a merge and link the output of the merge to the media out. Now in my text, I'm going to write learn more and I'm going to switch the font to pop in and instead of bold, I'm going to go with medium. Now I'm going to bring another background node here in my working area. I'm going to link the output of that background to the merge too. I'm going to select the background too. And here I'm going to just click on the rectangle mask. In the inspector here, I'm going to untick solid. And here I'm going to increase the border width. And I'm just going to adjust the border of my box to create my button. I will usually try to have about the same distance in space on each corner. So about the same distance here on the left side, on the right side, uh, on the top and bottom. I'm then going to increase a little bit the corner radius to have just rounded edges. Uh, that's a look that I prefer most of the time. Now we're going to click on the background too, and I'm going to switch the color to white. Now that the color has been changed, we can see that this border is a bit too thick for the font that we have. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle one, and here we're going to make some adjustment to the border width until we get thickness that just match the font that we choose. I think like that should be fine. Now that we got our button, we can start with the animation. For the animation, I'm going to need to have a mask here on my text one so i'm going to select my text one and then i'm going to click on rectangle to add a rectangle mask to the text one i'm going to just make that rectangle fit into my box here i'm just going to extend the width of it so we basically gonna want to try to mask the text here behind that mask so if i were to move that mask as you can see it's hiding uh, behind it so we're going to animate the text uh, out of this mask to do that we're going to click on text one and here we could just do a simple uh, animation on the position but we're gonna use actually the follower modifier to just animate each letter one by one so i'm gonna just right click here on text and i'm gonna scroll to follower it opened this modifier window i can just click on modifier here in modifier i'm gonna switch the order from automatic to right to left and we're gonna switch from between each character to between first and last character then the delay, I'm going to do minus 10. Now let's go over to shading and do the actual animation. To do that, we're going to scroll down to position. And here I'm going to make an animation basically on the offset. But to be able to make an animation here on the position, we're going to need to uh, bring it as a vector uh, result. So here I'm just going to right click on offset and I'm going to go to modify with vector result. It open a new modifier. And here we're going to basically make a keyframing on the image aspect. So I'm going to go to frame 25 and I'm going to just drop a keyframe here on this final position. And then I'm going to go down to zero and I'm going to adjust here the image aspect until the letter are out of the screen. So I'm just going to continue. It's going to be about here, about six for me like this. And now if we play it, as you can see, we have the animation of each letter. It looks a bit clunky, so we're going to need to adjust here the smoothness of the animation. I'm going to go over to Spline. Here, I'm going to select Text 1. I'm going to select here that button. It's going to just bring all two points, and I'm just going to select all the point. Hit the letter S on my keyboard to smooth out that curve. Now, I'm going to hit the letter T, and here, I'm just going to increase the ease in to about 85. Now, if we play it, we got something that already look way smoother. Now I'm going to do an animation on the opacity. So I'm going to go back to my text, go back to the modifier, click on the follower. And here I'm going to go about halfway through my animation. And here I'm going to drop a keyframe on opacity at one. And then I'm going to just go down to zero and bring the opacity down to zero. Now we have the animation for the text. We're going to do the animation for the box. So I'm going to go over to rectangle. I'm going to go at the 25th frame. And here I'm going to drop a keyframe on the length. And then I'm going to go to frame zero and I'm going to bring the length down to zero. 
Now in my spline, I'm gonna unselect my text one and it just leave me with that rectangle animation. I'm just gonna click right here so I can see all my points in one spot. I'm gonna select those two points, hit the letter S on my keyboard. Again, bring the easing up about 85. And now let's play it. We got a button animation, all good. One last thing is that we want to simulate here a click. So to do that, we're gonna just do an animation on transform node. So I'm gonna select my merge tool, hit shift space on the keyboard to open the select tool, search for transform. And here we're just gonna bring the transform node right there. And we're gonna make uh, an animation on that. Now I'm gonna go to frame 26 and I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the size at one. And then I'm gonna go to frame 30 and here i'm gonna bring the size down to 0 0.9 to basically here reduce the button like something has been clicked and then we're gonna bring back the size so i'm gonna move forward four frame at frame 34 and we're gonna bring it back to one now as you can see right here if i just bring everything in my spline we get now a curve that looks like this where the button is just shrinking and then coming back to the initial size. Now we're just going to make that look a bit smoother again. So I'm going to select all the points. I'm going to hit just S on our keyboard to smooth out that curve. And now we have our final animation. Let's play it. Perfect. I hope this video was helpful. You can download the macro of that title that we just made together in the link in the description below. The macro got a lot of all the functionality like adjusting the animation length, uh, the size position, the button control. We also added shadow, glow control. So there is a lot that you can do with it. So please check it out. And if you're interested in using more button, you can check out the full pack on our website where we have about 30 uh, button title that you can use to fit any of your project. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.